Jason here from OTR Performance, and behind me I have a 2022 Peterbilt 579 with a Packard MX-13 engine. And today I'm gonna to show you how OTR Diagnostics works on this truck. OTR Diagnostics also works on other heavy duty engines such as Cummins, Detroit, Volvo, and Mac. You can check available coverage on otrperformance.com. So let's get started. So I just got connected with the Bluetooth adapter behind me in the diagnostic port, and this truck uses the J1939 nine pin adapter. So once you have it plugged in, you can go ahead and have the adapter paired to your phone. And once you open up OTR Diagnostics, it's gonna go through the pairing process as well as it's gonna get connected and it's gonna kinda of go directly to the dashboard once it's connected. Now once it's connected, you're gonna land on the dashboard and here on the dashboard, we're gonna be able to see the fault codes, we're gonna see some live data and also some hot buttons in, in regards to uh, resetting your fault codes and also starting a force DPF region right on the main dashboard. Where I'm gonna to go to first is gonna click fault codes. I'm gonna kinda of go through all the different fault codes that are on the truck. This is where you get to see active as, all, as well as inactive fault codes. And you kind of start here, especially if this is the first time you're using OTR Diagnostics, you want to check the fault codes as a good starting point to see exactly what's going on with the truck. If you have uh, fault codes specifically um, on the brake system or on the headway controller or um, lane guidance um, for this truck, it has a few just inactive fault codes. Um, so we're going to go and navigate into the commands. This is where you're going to get power to be able to uh, actually perform a function. Usually this is called bi-directional commands. And so here you're actually gonna be able to send um, you know, uh, the command to do something to the truck. So this is where instead of you necessarily taking your truck into the dealer or um, a repair shop to be able to do the reset, you're able to do this yourself with OTR Diagnostics. You're able to reset the fault codes and you're gonna click on reset fault codes and you're gonna go ahead and click reset fault codes. It's gonna do the reset at the OEM level. So you're just gonna go through the process of uh, resetting the fault codes. And then once it's done, once the reset is successful, you'll get a reset successful prompt. And then you'll be able to go ahead and check your fault codes to see uh, what cleared and what stayed. Usually a lot of time when you're resetting fault codes and it's an active fault code, there's certain fault codes that will clear and there's certain fault codes that won't clear. And it all depends on um, what the actual issue is. If you have a sensor that's failed, a lot of times if it's failed with an open circuit, you have to replace the sensor or repair the wiring in order for that fault code to clear. So just pay attention to what the fault codes are and the description of that fault code to just really understand what issue that you currently have on your truck because just because you reset the fault codes doesn't mean that the problem has been fixed. That's why it's highly recommended you just review all the fault codes and then you kind of go through the troubleshooting step properly to ensure that the truck is fixed when you head back on the road. Um, there's the second thing that we have um, under the commands menu is reset after treatment. This is where you're able to reset the DEFD rate inside OTR Diagnostics. So if that truck gets derated um, just because of DEF, any type of issue with DEF, you're able to hit the DEF uh, D rate reset and it'll reset that five mile an hour uh, DFD rate for you. Um, and then what's usually the most common feature and the most value you can get out of OTR Diagnostics, um, you know, there's a lot of value in the fault codes, there's a lot of value in the uh, live data parameters that you're tracking, but there's also value in, in doing a forced DPF regen. And here's why. When you're driving down the road um, and your truck is, is trying to do a regen, now there's three different modes with regen. There's a passive regen, there's an active regen, and then there's a, a forced regen. And so when you're driving down the road, your truck is gonna naturally do an active regen. It's gonna inject fuel into the DPF. It's gonna raise that temperature up so it burns the soot off the DPF. And so what happens here is that um, over a period of time, the truck also um, gets to a point where it requires you to do a forced DPF regen. A lot of times it's because of either a sensor is kind of malfunctioning and that active or passive regen can't occur. And so a lot of times uh, it puts certain fault codes in the system where it requires you to do a forced DPF regen. And this is where tracking your soot level becomes very important. If you're tracking your soot level, a lot of times they'll just go from reading normal to extremely high. And so when it goes to that level, when it goes to high, a soot level is high, a soot level is extremely high, a lot of times it forces you to do a forced regen and it also tells you to do to regenerate your DPF on your dashboard. And a lot of times that doesn't work. And this is why you know you need a tool to be able to do a forced DPF regen because this will allow you to do that when those issues occur on your truck. 
a lot of times these after treatment issues, they occur when it's least convenient for us when you're driving. You know, it's not gonna occur at that perfect time when you have time. It's gonna be when you're loaded, you're going up a grade, going down a grade, or um, in climates that um, just put extra strain on the after treatment system, especially when you're dealing with colder temperatures or, or warmer temperatures, you're, you're putting a lot of strain on those sensors. And a lot of time, if th those sensors aren't reading correctly, it can't do the active uh, region when the truck is wanting to do it over the road. So it puts the, the truck in a position where a forced DPF region is required. And I also recommend just doing a forced DPF region every so often just to ensure that DPF filter is clean. Now you can also run Pittsburgh Power Catalyst in your system to just make sure that the DPF system is clean. That's a, a great way to keep, your, to keep on top of your system. But also I highly recommend just necessarily running a forced DPF region every so often depending on the type of driving that that you do. Now, if you're idling a lot or putting a lot of idle time on your trucks, this is where a forced DPF regen probably becomes even more common because your truck is not driving with heavy loads or at least just driving over the road in a long period of time to where a, a passive and active regen is occurring naturally. So this is where you get a lot of soot notifications as well as um, information in regards to, you know, having DPF problems. I highly recommend using DPF regen for these type of purposes. Next in the app, we have live data. This is where we go over the main important uh, parameters that we get to see out of the engine, um, such as DEF tank level, DEF tank temperature, your DPF soot load, your DPF pressure, um, your EGR, EGR mass uh, flow rate, your EGR valve position, you got your um, engine charger or cooler outlet temperature, you got your coolant level, you got your coolant temperature. So we got a lot of parameters that we're tracking and a lot of times this is coming directly from the engine controller which is directly connected to all these different sensors. And why it's important to track your live data because as you're driving over the road, you wanna just really understand and look at these parameters to know what good is. Because a lot of times when your truck is having a problem, you'll look at these parameters and understand that, okay, we're having an issue. My boost pressure is uh, typically around uh, 25 PSI. And right now my boost pressure is at 15 PSI where I'm going up a grade. And so a lot of times we can use these um, we understand more about our truck, we can be better at diagnosing if there's any potential issue that's gonna occur. And so that's why I highly recommend you just track live data periodically to really understand how your truck is uh, responding in regards to just driving over the road, as well as also when, it, when the truck's doing a regen. Now, when your truck's doing a regen, just while it's driving over the road, you're, you're gonna notice your parameters are gonna be a little bit off in terms of like, your exhaust temperature is gonna rise, your boost pressure is probably gonna decrease, and so your truck's gonna start acting a little funny and that's when you sometimes know that it's doing just a active regen while you're driving and so that's something also know and it's nice to track the live data parameters while you're driving over the road um, we also have a grid mode so you, if you see the data in the list you can also view it in a grid just depending on your preference levels um, in here and so what what's nice about OTR diagnostics and what I love about OTR diagnostics is really that everything's stored in the cloud and what that means for you is that if you have a fault code that appears today and you go ahead and reset that fault code out of the system and you hit reset fault codes, it removes it from your truck as well as um, you know, all the computers. And what we do in OTR Diagnostics is we actually capture that information we stored in the cloud. And why we do that is because you wanna always reference that fault code for a later time for diagnosis. And so when you use OTR Diagnostics, you're kind of getting a, a real-time troubleshooting diagnostic tool, but at the same time, it's also can be used as a historic, so you can share that fault code information, whether you wanna share it and look at that for historic purposes or for troubleshooting major issues. So if you reset your fault code and then you wanna head into a repair shop and they're like, well, what issue did you have? You can go back to that fault code say, hey, I had this fault code, this fault code, this fault code. I had to you know, clear the fault codes, but that issue, let's say, never appeared again, or the issue appeared again, and it took, let's say, 300 miles or five hours of driving to reappear again. So a lot of times, you know, the, the repair shop wants to replicate the issue so they can solve the problem. So if you're trying to do this yourself, it's a great way for you to understand what the problems are on the truck, as well as to see if it's a reoccurring issue. A lot of times you might reset the fault codes and the problem just disappears altogether. 
that's those are, these are the little flukes in the system where a lot of times there's certain conditions that are met to cause a fault code and then the fault code doesn't stay it was just a fluke in the system whether it's depending on the temperatures or your driving conditions that enable that fault code to occur but there's actually no problem with your truck so a lot of times you can reset those fault codes and that's what i usually call as ghost codes where ghost codes come and we really don't have a solution for it besides resetting the fault codes and so there's certain fault codes that get cleared out by just resetting the fault codes and then seeing if that fault code appears again. Now, I just went over a lot of stuff. I went over, uh, you know, connecting OTR diagnostics to your truck. I covered reading your fault codes. I I've went over all the bi-directional commands that we include on this 2022 uh, Packard MX engine. And then I also went over um, live data and just kind of going over the different parameters to go over for your truck. And I also covered how history could really help you diagnose as well as look at the historic data to track those ghost codes. Now, if you want more information and you want to learn more about OTR diagnostics, you can check it out at otrperformance.com for more information. Thanks for watching.